Hey folks, this is Kalani. Good to be giving you a few hints and tips on getting yourself to 500 crafting in your chosen profession a little bit easier, a little bit quicker, and saving you a little bit of gold. So, ooh, the main thing that really riles me, and we'll get to that a bit later, is about the refining past 450. Um, I'll talk about it later because I want to talk about before that. Now, before you get to 450, you've got a few a few tricks up your sleeve. So you can get to 425 very easily. You shouldn't go past 425 having used any of your materials. So from 400 to 425, you want to refine. And then from there, you want to create any... For Artificer, you want potions. Now, these are the potions such as the potion of... Um, or rather, the powerful potion of Elemental Slaying, which you can see the recipe there. There's a few of these. What you want to do is go over to the wiki, look at Artificing, and look at 400 rating. Alternatively, you can go into Discovery and throw up any 400 rating gems, the ruby orbs, that kind of thing, and then just piece things together to see what you get, if you can get something. So that's one way of doing it. Obviously with Huntsman and Weaponsmithing that will be sigils instead of potions. But going forward from 425. Now the first thing is, is just a must. You, you want a crafting booster active. This is going to save you potentially a lot of materials. The more materials you save, the less gold you're spending. The less gold you're spending, the less the less you sigh when you look back at your wallet, let's be honest. So, moving on, one very key thing to touch on is that right now, metal is far cheaper than wood. This means that creating a focus will cost me quite a bit more than making a trident. Now, this is very important because they will give both exactly the same amount of experience. The only difference is that once I've discovered everything with the trident, I'll have to move on to the others. The best example here is I should never make a staff, because a staff is going to cost me far more than even a scepter, a focus, and way more than a trident. So the reason why metal is so much cheaper is twofold. First, Orichalcum is actually considerably cheaper. If we have a go at buying the ore... Go go, trading post. Trading post, go go. Please? Pretty please? Hallelujah. So, right now, Orich Alcamore you can buy, now this is a buy order, or rather, this is a sell order, for 538. If you really want to push it, you can go down to 478. Wood, on the other hand, as we wait, oh, didn't have to wait an hour, is almost twice as much. You've got 8 silver 3 and 7 12. Now, twofold with that, is down in refinement, two ore for one ingot, but three wood logs for one plank. Meaning that for every three ingot you'll get, you'll only get two wood planks. So not only is the raw material more expensive, but you actually need more to refine, which kind of makes it a twofold far more expensive. Now, let's see, I've got record. Dear me. So after that, We've got a few discrepancies in the crafting components themselves and what you can create. Additional to that, your inscriptions are actually kind of a real gold dump as well because you can see that all of these require five Orichal completed dowels. Right now that'll cost you about four gold, upwards of four gold flat. Now interestingly enough, you can buy them on the trading post, but you can almost always buy them at a loss. So right now, if you could get a buy order in for 72 silver, that's actually better than crafting it yourself, but that's very unlikely to happen. But what is interesting is that right now, for example, a Carrion Orichalcum will probably cost you about 6 gold, six, just over 6 gold to make. But if we search in Rabid Orichalcum, we've got a Rabid Orichalcum imbued inscription, which you can have a buy order of 3 gold 88. That is exactly the same thing as this Carrion in Orich Alchem Imbued Inscription. Exactly the same thing. The only difference is obviously what you'll create at the end, but for experience terms, we don't care. We do not care what we create as long as we're getting experience. So you could shave off 2 gold, 
two gold? Thereabouts. Give or take a little bit, obviously, and that's if you do get the buy order. There's a sell order in five gold, so it's more or less cheaper outright. So you can save yourself a bit of money there as well. Now, obviously, the kind of underlying thing here, besides all of this, is you can farm these yourself. Everything that you require for these is farmable. Um, I hate relinking to other videos, but I've got a daily routine. Now, what's key about that is that your raw materials can be farmed every day on the nodes themselves, the tier 6 wood and ore. You can farm them with as many level 80 characters as you wish. Ectoplasms, glob of ectoplasms required for the inscriptions themselves. The best way to get those is the world events um, and dungeons. You change dungeon tokens into the rares at the, obviously the dungeon vendor token and then salvage those for globs. You salvage the rares you get from world events for globs. Additional to that, the champion farm, which is at the very end of the video. Once again, I apologise for linking to that, but it explains it a lot better than I can really be bothered to repeat. Every single champion bag has a chance to drop tier 6, and that's actually probably the best way to get tier 6 right now, because even if you don't get tier 6, you can get tier 5, and if you get tier 5, you can change that into tier 6, or you can sell it and buy tier 6. So, either which way, you can get yourself some more materials from doing those farms. So... You can farm them all, which is obviously always going to be saving you money. You can buy your inscriptions on the trading post, which can save you a bit of gold on the side. Or you can just be smart about all your crafting. So, for example, in Artificing, you can craft everything as a trident before you move on to focus. Because, first and foremost, ancient wood planks are actually... Well, the wood is less abundant most of the time. It's more expensive and you need more to refine which is kind of crazy on the side. Now, putting these into practice, I'm going to go ahead and create a few items. We'll create a trident. We can create a focus. And we can create a scepter. Now, I actually want to get to 450 in this video, simply so I can show the 450 refining. So, that means we need another two, which means we need another... 10 of these. This is where you drop so much money. It's ridiculous. It really is. First time I was doing this, I didn't actually realise how much money I was spending. Another thing to look at is, obviously, what's the cheapest tier 6. I don't really care about saving money right now. I just want to show you this. So I'll go ahead and buy these at a sell order, I recommend whenever you're buying materials, always buy them at a buy order, so you basically pay a lot less. Now, to speed things up quicker, we'll use a Trading Post Express, grab those, and go back to crafting. So, we want inscriptions, and I want to make a Rampages and a Valkyrie. The reason I don't want to make a Berserkers is that blood is still way too expensive. I've already made the majority of things as tridents, so I'll go ahead and make some focuses. Craft that one up. And craft that one up. Okay, so most people see this as kind of a milestone, I guess, getting to 450. I don't honestly see why. Now, what this does allow us is to make the refinements, the new refinements. So, they're still on cooldown for me, sadly but they don't even give that much experience. What I do want to have a look at is Obsidian Refinement. Now, I'd love for this to be a good source of experience, mainly because, or rather, a good source of valuable experience. Mainly because I have 4,800 piles of Bloodstone Dust, and they're not going to use anywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to craft an Imperial Star. Now, Imperial Fragments are gained through chests. Now, this is Dungeon Chests, Jumping puzzle chests, open world chests, mini dungeon chests, you get the idea. So they're not actually that abundant, but I'm going to go ahead and craft 100 of these into the Imperial Star. Now that was a crit as well. That didn't even give me a level, and it was a crafting crit. Now, the main issue that I have with this is that people are like, oh no, I'll just, I'll just wait it out. I'll just really slowly craft my way to 500 using the refinements. I'll tell you why that's a bad idea. So, we can we can go ahead, we can craft, we can we can get a few levels out of this. That was a crit again. We'll, we'll do, we'll do a few more. 
First thing you need to bear in mind is that this is using Obsidian Shards. Obsidian Shards are acquirable only via Karma. Right now, oh, I guess they're through Fractals as well, but no one wants to sit through Fractals just to get your Obsidian Shards. Karma right now has actually become increasingly difficult to get, mainly because of the daily and monthly changes. Now, it's a decent amount of experience, but it's using Karma, which we don't like, and it's actually using 10 of these Regents. Now, these Regents... No, we don't want to talk to you. Maybe I'll put that in the wrong place. These Regents cost 15 silver. So, every time you refine, it's 15 silver. We don't want that one. We want... Obsidian. So, 15 silver for... a bit of a level. So, roundabout, you're going to need about five of these without the crafting booster. So, five of these, five times fifteen, you're looking at seventy-five silver to get yourself a level. Whereas, an exotic will get you mm, four. Three or four levels. So, you may be spending... Okay, you will be spending a little bit extra to do it via your exotics, but... The better thing there is that you can make a lot more back with the exotics, which will cover the difference in cost. You're not using karma, and if you really wanted to, you could salvage the exotic. Now, salvaging the exotic may yield dark matter, which you require in the ascended crafting process, as well as globs of ectoplasm. If you get three globs of ectoplasm, that's nearly a gold back, which again, which would cover the cost difference. So. I honestly can't justify this at all, um, especially considering that most of it's completely worthless. I mean, I'll go ahead and craft these because I do need the Dragonite ingots. When I've got 37 Bloodstone bricks and you need 5 per ascended weapon, these aren't going anywhere, which is kind of disappointing and quite, a f quite an oversight, I'll be honest, on ArenaNet's part. But I don't know. I personally would go with exotics. It's faster. You can make more back from it. It helps you in your dark matter, which you require either way, and you can't buy it. So you're going to have to salvage some exotics somewhere along the line. And you're not wasting money here. You're not wasting obsidian shards, which, who knows, may become very prevalent sometime. They may become stupidly valuable. They may be in the new legendary recipes. They may be in the new ascended armor recipes. We don't know, especially considering Karma has become... Again, I'm saying it, Karma has become so much more difficult to get. I can honestly see them throwing a slap in our face saying, By the way, this new item requires a buttload of Karma. Have fun being gated behind that. Which is obviously not ideal, but either way. So, to recap, first and foremost, you can farm everything. Once again, you can farm your tier 6 from tier 6 nodes. There are maps, etc. to help you with that. You can farm your tier 6 crafting materials. That's the blood, the fangs, the dust. You can farm those with champion farming. That's probably the best way to do things. And globs of ectoplasm can easily be farmed with your world events and dungeons with dungeon tokens and the like. If you don't care about that, you can still save yourself a bit of money on the trading post. Just search Ori Chalcom imbued and this will bring you up or it should bring you up with all of the Dia Ori Chalcum imbued inscriptions now you can see we've got Dia, we've got Rabid, we've got Magi's all of these are, are pretty decent now the ones that you craft are more expensive so you kind of want to avoid those you can see we've got shamans nice and cheap there under five gold soldiers, settlers there's quite a lot here and then cavaliers to really round it off. I don't think there's any more. That appears to be it. So just search yourself Ori Chalcom Imbued and pick up the cheapest ones. That's a very nice way to do it. And remember, crafting the right thing can save you some silver on the side. As an artificer, crafting tridents is the best. When you run out of that, you want to move to focus and scepter and stay away from staffs. Weaponsmithing, I can give you the best example of a dagger. Daggers cost less to make than a greatsword, for example. And I believe 
shields are also pretty decent. But remember that your axes will split the cost between your wood and ore. So if that's something you need to do, you've always got that option. Now, Huntsman has several things which are exactly the same principle. So take these things on board and you may be able to save yourself a bit of money going forward to 500 crafting. Now, obviously, this is for folk who are still having qualms about going to 500. I mean, or maybe for people like me going for a second trade skill to 500, or maybe the third, who knows. So, that's all. Leave your questions, queries, and comments in the comment section below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Apart from that, thanks for watching, folks. Good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.